I've been uh, teaching at the university um, for about 30 years. And uh, um, my first uh, teaching uh, job is at the UCLA for about one and a half years. And then after that, I've been at the USC for 28 years. And my uh, teaching subject is about uh, the um, uh, image video processing and generally multimedia technologies. And so I'm a professor and also a researcher and supervising a, a large number of PhD students. When I was a PhD student, uh, I was interested in signal and image processing. And later there is uh, some kind of evolution of the field. So start to have a different kind of media combined together. So uh, uh, speech, and image, uh, video, computer graphics, and all form called multimedia. So, uh, so that's the natural evolution of my uh, PhD research and, and then the, my, my research at the USC. And I've been teaching the course on the image processing uh, for a long while. And also I de developed a course called the Multimedia Data Compression. And also for, I say, 25 years. So yeah, I've been working in the coding compression field for a long time. I think the multimedia actually is a very tangible. You can see it, you can hear it. So I think a, a lot of students are uh, interested in the, in the topic because it's not abstract at all. And you can talk about many applications. So it's a real, real world, whatever. You, you, you see you know, the environment. And so when I uh, went to see the movie with my wife and some special effects, I tried to explain what's the special effect about and so on, what's the, how you create that. And she was not very happy. <laughs> she didn't want to enjoy. <laughs> she, she didn't want me to tell her all the uh, technology behind it. But actually, you know, there are so many things happening daily it's a multimedia. So I think that's, a, uh, you feel, you know, you can make something and contribute and you can see the result. Of course, multimedia has a different aspect. So one is about representation. And when you represent, you know, the digital media actually uh, takes a lot of bandwidth and, and the, the storage. So you really need a compression. If you don't compress, just huge. And, and so, but the field has been, um, I would say, the, the field has been sort of active for the 30 years. So that's been a long while. So it, it has gone through several up low points. Sometimes it's hard, sometimes people also feel there's nothing left. And then, you know, uh, again, so up down several cycles. And, uh, and the computer vision, the similar situation, there was a period of time it was really People feel nothing you can do, but recently it surged you again because of the deep neural net and, and so on. So yeah, but overall I feel the, the whole feel about multimedia always uh, uh, keep getting new things, keep, keep uh, getting a new momentum. So basically it uh, keeps me very busy. So, but on the other hand, we need to be a little bit flexible. You cannot just stick to one particular area, say just compression or just understanding. We need to do uh, different things. CCJ Kuo, a professor at the University of Southern California, has had a distinguished career over three decades of contributing to the professional uh, expertise, the body of knowledge through conference presentations and through his, his uh, writings in professional journals. However, that isn't the main focus of the committee's evaluation. We are concerned with each nominee as an educator, and Professor Kuo rose to the top. Students, uh, in the beginning, they need more supervision. Yeah, they are not experienced, and, and so, so usually I think I guide them until like uh, uh, qualifying them. So, but then after that, uh, I basically give them at least one year to, to be more independent, and, and so they need to, to figure out uh, some, 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 you know, how to handle the open questions and so on. So I want to see them 
to be independent and to a certain degree. And then I feel comfortable to let them leave with a PhD degree. So, yeah, so, and also I, I feel it's different philosophy. Some professors just feel totally hands off. But I personally feel you need to, through transition, if you're more hands on in the beginning stage, actually you can speed up the, the student's study time. The students don't have a wandering around for too long. That's usually, I feel, the critical years in the you know, beginning, the several years. And then in the process, you start to stimulate them and then, then know what they can do themselves. And then the whole process will be more, uh, I will say, more reasonable. It takes too long, I feel, students just get sort of become flat tire and they don't have much momentum. They don't, just survive, just to hang on. But I feel personally, we should let students get a maximum and keep them busy. And then, you know, and then at a certain point, they need to go to the next stage of their career. Challenges, I, I think the, there are still a lot of uh, difficult problems. And uh, I think the AI, you know, how to use the artificial intelligence, particular multimedia related AI means that understand audio, video, those kinds of things. Just like human, we interact with so many multimedia things. So machine interact with the environment. So AI-oriented multimedia, I think uh, will be hard. And I think, um, actually, I, I told students, probably next 10 years will be the golden period of all major breakthroughs. And if you don't grab the, the opportunity, then it becomes historical page. You know? So this in the, the next 10 years will be extremely important. Students, again, they, they just want to do apply the research. They want just to put the system together. And it seems like the, the major trend in the publication or in the you know, uh, top company, all like this. But again, I, 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 I try to convince them to do more fundamental research. And actually, there is some tension about that because they feel it's a, what are you talking about? No one, no one tried to do this. I don't believe no one should try to do that, but maybe very few people try to do it. At the end, actually, I'm doing some research myself and try to use myself as the way to demonstrate to students it's possible to understand those kind of black box. When I uh, was a PhD student, in the beginning, I, I uh, you know, I was naive. I, I thought that as long as I get a research assistantship, I get a support, I can do anything. I feel I was capable, I could do anything. Then there is a senior student told me, Jay, uh, maybe you are capable, but this is not the right approach. You really need to know your interest, and, and interest matter. And I didn't understand that too much. But after a while, I, I start to realize, you know, to enjoy your work, to love your work, that's very, very important. You can do to a certain degree with your capability, but you cannot be outstanding with only capability. You will be outstanding because you really love the work. So I think that that's, uh, to me, enjoy the work and, and love it. That's, a, that's one of the most important things. And of course, you also need discipline. Right? It's not just the, uh, you know, talk about fun. Sometimes things are serious and particular things are low. You cannot solve a problem for, for a long while, but you still need discipline. So you have to enjoy. That gives you the most nutrition to, to keep going. But on the other hand, you, have, you also need to persist. And, and, and when things are difficult, maybe not that enjoyable, you still need to continue, right? So persistent. 240 journal papers, 880 conference papers, 30 patents, and 14 books. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. CCJ Kuo. It was our pleasure as, as a committee to review the many excellent educators we have in the Computer Society. We review them not so much for their, their technical expertise as, as the, we do to their ability to deliver knowledge to a student, to, to uh, develop bonds with the students, to ensure that education occurs in the students. 
leave with the knowledge of knowing how to apply whatever technical area they learn. We, we receive many award nominations across the technical spectrum that the Computer Society has. I didn't think about what this will lead me to. Okay? So I just say, this is the right thing, and this thing I like to do, so I just do it. And then when you look back, your time flies, and, and then I have complete supervision of, at, at this point, 134 PhD students. And, uh, but I, I never really counted it to stay here. <laughs> this has never been an issue to me. Each student matters. Each student to me is a new student. It's, a, it's an individual person. So I, I enjoy, I have a good memory with every student, and they become my, my friends. And I really, you know, when we met, we talk about family, we talk about many things. We not only talk about research or career, and so I, I feel this kind of uh, personal care and you really want them to do well. In my 30 year academic career, nothing has been more rewarding than serving as an advisor for a large number of talented and hardworking PhD students. I'm really grateful. Okay. I, um, you know, it's the recognition of the, of the peers. And, and they are all excellent. There are many, many people, I think, uh, deserving the recognition. Unfortunately, you know, I have been uh, you know, selected, uh, uh, selected for this. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great honor. I'm, I'm very uh, happy. Um, and also, I think the honor should be shared with my family and uh, also my, my students.